and welcome to the Mastin Drum Whiskey Room. My name is Jason C. And if you're a subscriber, thanks so much for the support. If you're new to the channel, looking for the latest in whiskey and bourbon news and reviews, you have found the right place. So hit that subscribe button below and hit the bell notification so you know when I'm releasing a new video or you can join in on one of my live streams. Welcome to the seventh episode in a special series called Double Bass, where you, the viewers, get to pick two great whiskeys to put head to head to see which one comes out on top. So after the last episode and having a great budget bourbon matchup, Today we have a heavyweight scotch head-to-head -head featuring one of the most well-known scotch brands in the game against a distillery that's producing some amazing whiskeys in their own right. This matchup was voted on by a couple of viewers including the Whiskey Friend and Mark Saliba. Thanks guys. This should be a great battle between two classic 12-year single malts. Let's get a closer look at our competitors. The McCallum is big, real big. Prized by collectors, consumed all over the world, the McCallum is a marketing powerhouse with a very wide range of single malt expressions targeting local tastes in every major market. Distilling almost continuously since 1824, when Scotland first legalized the production of spirits, none might be more well known than the McCallum 12. Matured exclusively in sherry oak, which McCallum obtains from Jerez in Spain, where both the cask and the sherry seasoning are carefully controlled and selected. The McAllen 12-year-old Sherry Oak has won numerous awards over the years and is one of the most highly regarded single malts by the connoisseurs and new scotch drinkers alike. This is bottled at 43% ABV, has no color added, and available for about 65 bucks. Glendronic was founded in 1826 by James Allardyce. It is named after the source of water from which the distillery draws its stock. Dronic Burn is the source of the water. The name Dronic means brambles, so the distillery name itself translates to the Valley of Brambles. Generally, the production of Glendronic whiskeys are high quality, relatively affordable, without color or chill filtration. The Glendronic 12-year-old is matured in fine Pedro Jimenez and Oloroso sherry cask from Andalusia in Spain. The expression is also bottled at 43%, is non-chill filtered, and natural in color, and can be had for about 60 bucks. So before we get started, here's how I will score it. I will give a score between 1 to 5, 1 being the lowest and 5 being the highest in 4 different categories, nose, palate, finish, and consistency. The sherry Scotch with the highest total score at the end of the matchup wins. All right, guys, so I'll be doing this one blind because I really don't have a lot of experience with McAllen and haven't had Glendronic 12 in a while. So this should be a really cool matchup. Now, since my palate for Scotch has evolved a little bit uh, since when I first started, uh, this should be an interesting matchup. So let's mix it up. First, I'm going to remove my whiskey hats, uh, Scotch Test Dummies and Aqua Vitae. I'm using their hats today. All right, let's mix them up. All right, guys, so it's time to bring up the scoreboard. Here it is. Keep your eye on it. Keep track of uh, what's going to win, uh, what's kind of better in which category. Uh, let's start off with glass A, and then this will be glass B. Um, let's go to the nose on this one, see what we get. Here we go. This one has a ton of orange flavor to it. Definitely get some, um, some of those sherry notes, some of that sherry influence on there. It's like very fruity. There's a raisin uh, characteristic to it. A little bit of a butterscotch note on here as well. This one has a good amount of uh, oak influence in it. I'm, I'm getting a good, um, good kind of a spicy oak flavor in here. Definitely some citrus. Yeah, raisins, dates really coming through from that sherry influence. Really nice nose. It's very sweet, very inviting. There's a really nice almond characteristic in here too, like a nice roasted almond. I'm also getting a little hint of a, um, uh, like a cocoa powder, like a nice fresh cocoa. Or I mean chocolate, whatever you want to call it, but... Yeah, orange, chocolate, spice, some, uh, that, there's a really nice butterscotch note in there that I really like too. Really good on the nose. Very inviting, very sweet. I like that one a lot. All right, let's go to letter B and see what we get here. Wow, this one is really coming through on the nose. This is, has more sherry influence, but this has some, um, some of that raisin characteristic, some citrus. There's a really nice bright apple note on here that I really like. It's got some spicy notes to it. Again, this one is also lemony as well. Man, this is like uh, deep, like brown sugar and Granny Smith apples, like kind of like when you're getting ready to put in an apple pie. It's so good on the nose. Definitely some honey there. I'm getting that butterscotch note too, but it's more, it's a little bit more intense. It's really nice. Man, that one's good too. 
Not, I'm not getting like that chocolate note that I was getting on here, but this one has a little bit more of an intense fruit flavor, a little bit more robust on the nose. So, all right, let's score these. All right, guys, so for letter A, I'm gonna give this one a 3.5 to start off with. Really good score. This one has a really sweet nose. It's got orange. It's got some nice almond characteristic to it. It's got that nice little dusting of a cocoa powder in it too that I really like. Um, I love the butterscotch note on here as well. It comes through very, very bright, very clean. It's fruity. There's definitely a little bit more of an oaky characteristic uh, in this one. Yeah, so I really like this nose on this one. It's very sweet, very inviting, very pleasing. There's nothing off-putting about it. Very straightforward, love it. All right, so for letter B, um, I'm gonna give this one a four. This, the nose on this one is really nice. It's really inviting. It's, it's way more complex than what's going on on letter A here. Um, I love the raisins, I love the dates, I love that deep, darker, kind of richer characteristic to it. It's the honey, it's a caramel. Uh, the apple note on here, like a, like a cooked, like deep, dark apples is really the one that got me. I love that note. Also butterscotch, a little bit of a nutty characteristic here too. All right, guys, it's time to go to the palette. Here we go. Let's start with letter A and see what we get. Cheers. Mmm. Wow, ton of sherry influence. This one is like powdered sugar on the palate, man. That is sweet, delicious. Mmm. There's some, um, there's some cinnamon and spice on the palate here that I really, really like. It's kind of clinging to the sides of your tongue. It's not too mouth coating on the palate. Let's go for another sip and let's see what we get. Cheers. Mm, so second sip, wow. Man, this has a ton of baking spices in it. I'm really surprised. This is, this is cinnamon, this is raisin, this is um, nutmeg. The spice on this, um, it, it's really prevalent. It's got a really good oak influence too. It's very sharp, the, the flavors are bright. Um, man, it's sweet. Even getting a little bit of vanilla too. Hmm. Let me go for another sip. Here we go. Cheers. Yeah, those flavors are really reigning true too. They're sticking to the palate. A lot of cinnamon, baking spice. You're definitely getting a little bit of that raisin, a little bit of that cocoa aspect to it. Really, really like it. And now some more of that almond characteristic is coming through. A little bit of an almond and butterscotch note type, um, type aspect to it. Really like that one a lot. All right. Let me take a sip of water here. All right, let's go to letter B and see what we get. Here we go. Cheers. Wow, that, that apple toffee butterscotch really hits the palate right away. Really nice. This one has more of a, uh, of a creamier mouthfeel, I think, too. I really like that one a lot. It's sweet. This one, I think, has more vanilla than A. Getting more vanilla aspect in here. Some dark fruits, some some like honey roasted nuts in here too. Man, the first the first kind of punch of flavor. There's a lot going on. Let's go for another sip. Cheers. There's still tons of that honey baked apple, cinnamon, more of that lemon peel in there too. A lot of a, a good uh, good sense of lemon going on in there too. Yeah, but man, on the palate, this is slightly more mouth coating but doesn't have the spice like A does. This one isn't as spicy, but the, the flavors I feel are, are more, um, a little bit more robust here on the palate. Let's go for one more sip here, cheers. Yeah, there's some oak there, but this is way more fruity. Sweet apple, vanilla, some roasted nuts, mm, sherry sweetness. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit darker, a little bit richer. There's more of a butterscotch note there too. Definitely a little bit more of a coating mouthfeel. So um, this one's gonna be hard to figure out because I really like the spiciness of A, and I like the, the, um, the peppery and the and the cinnamon aspect it gives all around the palate. Uh, but this one has more of a flavor punch to it. It's uh, and it's better on the palate. Uh, hmm, I'm gonna have to try to think this one through. Here we go. All right, guys, so this was kind of a tough, uh, tough category because they both offer um, different experiences, uh, but both equally unique and good at the same time. There are some similarities there, but I felt like one was just slightly better. Um, so I'm going to say letter A here. I'm going to give this one, I gave this one a solid four. Uh, this one had some really great sweet flavors to it, um, but the really, the thing that sold me on it was this oaky, spicy cinnamon, the baking spice, um, this, uh, this kind of oak burst that was on the like kind of mid palate. 
and the way like that spice just kind of stayed and stuck to your uh, to the sides of your palate it was really good and i love that about a um even in a bourbon i love that part where it could just kind of tingle and just kind of leave it there it means that you could kind of really enjoy it um sip after sip as you keep drinking uh so letter b i'm gonna give this one a 4.2 and the only reason why it gets uh, two tenths points of a higher than this one is the mouthfeel on it. It's a little bit creamier. The, uh, the flavors come through a little bit stronger on the front of the palate. Um, and then it, you know, it kind of sticks around the creamy mouthfeel to it. It just seems a little bit darker, a little bit richer. Love the butterscotch, the honey roast and nut aspect to it. Um, but I really did love the kind of the cinnamon spice on this one and the and the way it just tingled on the palate. But I think overall, this had a little bit better of a, of a palate than letter A. All right, guys, it is time for the finish. Here we go. Let's start with letter A. Here we go. Cheers. So what this, what this whiskey, what this scotch lacks for me a little bit on the front of the palate, it makes up for on the finish. The cinnamon spice to it, the pepperiness, the way it lingers on the sides of your tongue and then it just kind of kind of goes on it's really nice it's not a super long finish it's probably short almost getting on to medium but what you're left with is this really nice peppery spice that just lingers on and on and you can just kind of keep you know hanging on that for a good amount of time let's go for another sip yeah even that sip it's just that cinnamon and allspice and that nutmeg characteristic and a little bit of a nutty characteristic uh, with a little bit of that cocoa powder is what you kind of left with on the finish. Really great uh, on letter A. I really like that one a lot. All right, let's go for a sip of water. All right, let's go with letter B. Let's see what we get. Cheers. This one doesn't have as much of a spice kick, but what it does have, what it, does, what it lacks in a spice kick, it actually makes up for in fruity flavors. It's really good on the, on the finish. It leaves a long lingering um, kind of, like I said, like that apple, that apple note to it and that, you know, a little bit, a little bit of oak, but it's more fruity on the finish than this one is. Let's go for another sip here. Cheers. Yeah, this one is more uh, fruit intense to me on the, uh, on the finish. Not as, um, not as spicy or oaky like I was getting on, uh, on letter A here. This one has a really nice uh, fruit finish to it. More of that apple, that honey is coming through, a little bit of a roasted peanut. You are getting some cinnamon spice, but not nearly as intense as here. It just kind of, it, it just kind of depends on what you like, I guess, whether you like that really nice spiky cinnamon kick, like a red hot, really spicy, or you like a little bit more of a, of a fruit flavor uh, aspect to it. But both really have good finishes. I'm gonna go for one more sip on this one. Cheers. Yeah, so exactly what I was saying. The finish on here, it's it's very nice. But I think where this one wins more is on the palate than the finish. All right, guys, so we're just going to switch them up for this one. So for the scores for letter A, I gave this one a 4.2 because I love that, that spiky cinnamon type of oak profile that it has. It's really nice. It lingers. It stays, um, it kind of hangs around your palate. You can really sip on it little by little. And that pepperiness just kind of stays there. And also that little bit of a cocoa powder and raisin aspect to it on the very end too. And still a good amount of butterscotch. All right, so for B, I'm going to give this one a four. Even though I like the, the finish on it, it's fruity, it's sweet. Um, I personally, I happen to like that cinnamon spice you get on the, on the back of a good scotch or a good whiskey. Um, it's, it's one of the things that I feel like it kind of helps the experience. It allows you to sip on it slower instead of having to keep going back to it because as it lingers, it just kind of sits there and you can enjoy it more and more. Um, this one just has way more of a, of a little bit of a smoother, fruitier type finish to it. And even though it's delicious and it's really good, I can appreciate that cinnamon spice that I really like personally on letter A. All right, guys, let's go to the final category, consistency. Here we go. Let's start with letter A. Here we go. Cheers. Wow, that, this glass has stayed so consistent from beginning to end here. You still get the flavors. You get the, the little bit of the raisin, a lot of powdered sugar sweetness, cinnamon, the nutmeg. Definitely, this is definitely oakier than this one. Um, a little bit of that cocoa powder on the end. Really good. And to finish it off, you're still getting that, that spiky cinnamon, like red hot characteristic on the back of the palate. Let's go for one more sip here. Cheers. Yeah, the flavors flatten out, but mean, I mean, ever so slightly. But you're still left with a ton of flavor in here. It's really, really good. 
Delicious on the palate. Love the finish. This is probably one of the more consistent whiskeys I've had in a while. So uh, let me get a quick sip of water here. All right, let's go to letter B and see what we get. Cheers. That one too. This one has remained very consistent. I'm still getting that beautiful toffee apple sweetness to it. Some vanilla, rich, rich um, those rich dark fruit flavors I'm getting, the raisin. There's a slight cocoa powder on this one as well, just like that one, but not as intense as this one. This one I get a little bit more chocolate note, some oak. But again, this is really fruity. This is definitely way more fruitier and nuttier than this one is. This one comes in with a little bit more of that oak and spice and baking spices. Really, really good. Let's go for another sip here. Cheers. Yeah. I mean, listen, when it comes to flavor and consistency, both of these have really brought it uh, for this episode. Um, this one I said was really consistent, but so is this one. This one is, the, the flavors that I'm getting have been, from the first sip to just to this sip now, have been absolutely awesome. They're coming through with all those, those great flavors, the oak, the honey, the cinnamon, the apple, the brown sugar, the caramel, a little bit of a butterscotch note. And it's ending with that really nice fruity, um, fruity finish. Also with a little bit of a, um, of a spicy characteristic on the finish too. Uh, not nearly as much as A, but really good. Both of these bring in the consistency for this episode. All right, guys. So for this score for these, this one's going to be pretty easy. Um, this, end, this might end up being the closest score we've had in a double base episode. Um, I'm giving letter A and letter B both a five for consistency because these did not change much from sip to sip. Um, letter A, I still had the lemon, I still had the vanilla, I still had that um, a little bit of a cocoa powder spice, the cinnamon, that red hot on the back of the palate, absolutely delicious, and it stayed from the first sip all the way to the ones I literally just had. Very, very consistent uh, whiskey here. Same with letter B. Letter B also comes in with some creamy mouthfeel, um, the honey, the baking spice, the apple, the apple note in here is what I totally love. Um, definitely a little bit more of a creamier mouthfeel than here as we, as we found out earlier, but finishes off with a fruitiness, a little bit of a cinnamon spice, not nearly as much as this one, but both of them, probably some of the most consistent whiskeys I've had in a while. All right, guys. So as you can see on the totals on the scoreboard, letter B comes in with the win with a total of 17.2 while letter A comes in with a close 16.7, really close matchup today. Uh, this was really fun. Really glad to do this one. I don't know at all which one came out on top. So let's find out, here we go. So letter B is, winner is Glendronic 12. As you can see from the scoreboard here, really it was the nose and a little bit more on the palate that really put it over for me. I think maybe being more of a non-chill filtered uh, scotch, it just had a better mouthfeel to me. The nose definitely went over the, uh, the McAllen, but the McAllen's finish, that spiciness, and that lingering aspect to it really almost put it over the top, but um, if it really wasn't for the nose uh, and a little bit of a creamier palette, the McAllen really would have uh, came out on top, I think. All right, guys, so both of these bottles, I think, are stellar examples of, uh, of bottles that you can use to get into single malt scotch, especially being so sherry, so accessible, good price point uh, on both of them. If you're looking for something a little bit more spicy and sweet at the same time, something that has a little bit more of a of a cinnamon aspect to it to go along with those sweet flavors, then definitely pick up the McAllen 12. Absolutely delicious, was really surprised by this one. Um, if you're looking for something that's a little bit more smoother, a deeper, richer, kind of a fruitier flavor profile, then Glendronic 12 is the way to go. And it's about five bucks cheaper than this. Like this is 65, this is about 60. Uh, I have seen both for a little bit cheaper if they're on sale. So, you know, keep an eye on if you're looking to um, get into single malt scotch with these two bottles. All right, guys, well, thanks again for watching the Master Drum Whiskey Room. Do not forget to leave a comment below. Let me know if you've had either of these two whiskeys, if you put them head to head, what you think of them. Uh, leave your comments below and your suggestions for my next double bass episode. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit that like button. Uh, if you haven't yet, find me on Instagram and find me on Twitter. Always love talking to you guys. Let me know what you think about these two whiskeys. And as I always say, it is not about the whiskey. It is the people you share it with. So cheers, and I'm going to have some more Glendronic. Take care, everybody.